For the third or fourth year in a row, this era of peak TV has continued to expand on a level that looked previously unexpandable. We got 487 scripted TV series in 2017, which is obviously absurd, but we're getting, at last count, 520 in 2018. Could have been 521 as well if Cleary's Super Time Sexy Science Hour, a charming blend of scripted family farce and highly educational astrophysics lessons, hadn't been rejected by TV execs for being, and I quote, a really stupid idea, stop calling us. Anyway, Netflix have continued to produce original content at an almost alarming rate, and everyone else has been doing their level best to catch up. From established streamers like Amazon and Hulu to the likes of YouTube and Facebook all trying to get in on the act. It's led to a vast number of new series debuting, but in such a hotly contested marketplace, which has stood out from the crowd? Well, I'll tell you. My name is Adam Cleary, and these are the 10 best new TV shows of 2018. Number 10, Bodyguard. For five weeks towards the end of the British summer, it seemed all anyone could talk about was Bodyguard. The BBC series achieved the sort of cultural and social media domination normally reserved for reality TV, and, well, watching it, you can understand why. Former King in the North Richard Madden stars as Police Sergeant David Budd, who is assigned as the bodyguard to Keely Hawes' Julia Montague, the Home Secretary whose politics he deeply deeply disagrees with. What follows is a smart conspiracy series that's designed to get people discussing theories and speculating on what's going to happen, offering the kind of water cooler appeal that is frankly all too rare these days. It's not just the thrilling twists and turns that make this series tick, though. There's a solid political drama in here too, and two outstanding performances from both Madden and Hawes. The latter excels as a morally ambiguous politician, but the former shines even brighter, having to hide so much pain and anguish behind a strong exterior. Number 9. Succession Another summer hit here, although this time for the US. The family drama about a media oligarch and his family who will be inheriting the business started off extremely slow, but once it all clicked, there was a real magic to it. With more characters brought into play later in the season, and thus the chance to tell more intersecting stories rather than looking at the broader arc, it got a lot more interesting. But it was only after a few episodes when the show's true nature became clear that it really found its voice. Created by Jesse Armstrong, who also made sitcom Peep Show, the series plays much better as a comedy than it does a drama. It's ultimately a dark, satirical, cutting and hilarious portrayal of the media, power and family struggles. Succession itself doesn't quite seem to know that at first, but once it does, it absolutely flies. Number 8. Dynasties. Straight up, David Attenborough could talk you through that night your parents first sank two bottles of wine and did the old horizontal greased weasel tango, and it would be worth listening to. So, when he has actually engaging subject matter, and no offence to your parents there, then it's unmissable viewing. Such is the case with Dynasties, the new big Attenborough series of 2018. It doesn't quite have the same grandeur and wonder of its predecessors Planet Earth 2 and Blue Planet 2, but it's nonetheless another gorgeous look at the creatures who inhabit our planet. Whether it's the Battle of George shrugging off the loss of a finger to reclaim his throne in some wire-esque you come at the king, you best not miss storytelling, a waddle of penguins against a stunning Aurora Borealis, or the family feud of the painted wolves, it's an incredible look at wildlife. Utilising Attenborough's narration alongside state-of-the-art technology, it's a superb insight not only into this world's colourful critters, but their ecosystems as well. Number 7. The Haunting of Hill House Taking on a horror classic is no easy feat, especially when it's a book as revered as Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. Step forward then Mike Flanagan, one of the best horror directors working today, who wisely chooses to make this more of a reimagining than a true adaptation. What makes Hill House work is that it isn't just a horror. Don't get me wrong though, it does excel at the scary elements and includes a jump scare I have had to throw a pair of trousers away over, but I digress. It's a technical marvel, you see, and even has a one-shot fueled sixth episode. Surprisingly though, it works equally as well as a horror as it does a family drama. Going back and forth between two times Lines, and with the Crane family brilliantly cast in both, the show begins to coalesce in surprising, shocking and affecting ways. That's both in terms of their relationships with each other and the house itself. Number 6. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina 
Now, yes, this isn't even close to being the Sabrina you grew up with, but that's very much a good thing. I am H.O. A more direct reboot of the 90s sitcom Sabrina the Teenage Witch would never, ever, ever have lived up to it, but Chilling Adventures of Sabrina shines in its difference. Based on the comic of the same name, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is still the story of 16-year-old Sabrina Spellman, her aunt Hilda and Zelda, her boyfriend Harvey, and her cat Salem, but that's about all it retains. This is a dark, horror tinged coming of age story that puts the focus on Sabrina and her deal, or lack thereof, with the devil. If anything, this has more in common with the first season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. A little rough around the edges as things take shape, but a great mix of two different worlds and the struggle of one girl to fit into both of them. There are serious socially relevant messages in here, but more so it's a wickedly fun, gorgeously shot and devilishly dark series. Magic. Number 5. Homecoming. With Julia Roberts making her lead TV debut, the backing of Amazon, and being created by the mastermind of Mr. Robot Sam Esmail, hopes were understandably high for Homecoming. Thankfully, it was just about able to meet them. The star of the show is undoubtedly Roberts. It's great to see her in a truly meaty role here, and she gets the chance to show off her range in a way she hasn't in years. She's supported by Stephen James, Shay Wiggum, and Bobby Cannavale, whose surname I always get wrong, once again proving he's a terribly underused actor. It's also directed like a 70s conspiracy thriller in terms of its central mystery, which will keep you guessing throughout its 10 episodes. It also brings so much of the dazzling visual pizzazz that made people take notice of Mr. Robot, all in tight 30-minute bursts. Number 4, Barry. At last, a full showcase of all of Bill Hader's talents and not just his comedic sensibilities. Starring in this series as the titular Barry, a low-rent Midwest hitman who moves out to LA for a contract but ends up finding genuine acceptance and friendship within the local theatre circuit. Created by Hader himself alongside Alec Berg of Seinfeld fame, it succeeds in being one of the funniest series of the year thanks to their combined talents. There are moments when it works as a dark comedy, especially given the nature of Barry's job, but then there are some more absurd, laugh-out-loud gags within the theatre scenes. The show works best, however, when bringing both of these strands together. The two very distinct worlds colliding not only generates laughs, but is where the series finds a genuine sense of tragedy too. And more importantly, where Hader delivers his strongest, most riveting work. Number 3, Killing Eve. Just in case there was any doubt, Phoebe Waller-Bridge reaffirmed her status as one of the most exciting creatives in TV with Killing Eve. While she didn't star in it as she did with Fleabag, she wrote four episodes, including the pilot and the finale, and it carries her unique voice throughout all eight exhilarating installments. Killing Eve is an invigorating entry into the spy genre, pitting Eve, an MI5 officer, against VNL, a highly skilled assassin. What follows is a thrilling, dangerous game of cat and mouse with those positions frequently reversed as each learns more about the other and attempts to gain the upper hand. There's a dark, often wry humour to the show which has a playfulness that nicely complements its suspense. There are no real heroes here, but it puts a great twist on the anti-hero trope with a decidedly feminine bent that deals with obsession, attraction and isn't afraid to get weird. All in all, leading to one of TV's best surprises of 2018. Number 2, Maniac. Netflix didn't give too much away ahead of Maniac's debut, meaning viewers had very little idea what to expect. Even if they had given us more clues though, we probably still wouldn't have expected… well, this. The basic premise is that it follows two people struggling with different issues. Emma Stone's Annie has bipolar disorder, while Jonah Hill's Owen is schizophrenic. They both partake in a new trial that promises to cure all ills. What follows is a reality-bending trip to a world that's just ever so slightly off from our own, and a story about the human connections we make in life. The whole cast is good, obviously, but Stone steals the show with a performance every bit as mesmerising as it is complicated. Not unexpectedly, Maniac gets extremely weird at times, including a Raising Arizona riff centred around in Lima and a fantasy epic yarn that echoes Lord of the Rings, but it's that human centre that makes it all come together, both in ways surprising and satisfying. Number 1. Sharp Objects Arriving in the midst of summer, Sharp Objects is a sweltering, suffocating series designed to make you as uncomfortable as the heatwave it coincided with. 
Sharp objects brought all of its powerhouse talent together for a slow burn southern gothic mystery that made sure your eyes were glued to the screen even as all your senses told you to look away. From the labyrinth plotting to the enthralling visual language, the stunning performances from Amy Adams and Patricia Clarkson, to the stifling atmosphere, the series sweeps you up in both its murder mystery and the small town family drama, only letting go just long enough to make sure you scream. Sharp Objects isn't just one of the best new TV shows of the year, it's one of the best shows of 2018, full stop.